What's up, guys? Check, checking in with y'all. I had a discussion at lunch today with uh, a good friend of mine, Norman. Norman is a uh, nation of Islam, and he just, you know, we had a conversation about Uncle Tom's, coons, sellouts, mammies, and stuff like that. And he was like, just, you know, really upset about a YouTube video he seen from Anthony Brian Logan about something. And he was just like, I don't know how these niggas get away with it. How they exist and, you know, how nobody ever bust them in their mouth. And and it hit me that I don't think anybody's ever done a video on how, like, agents and coons and sellouts, like, how these people get, even, like, the Hispanic ones, like, how, how they get away with it. And they always seem to be, like, like untouchable. And I'm, I'm going to go into that for a second. Um, The way, there's three ways that coons do this. Um. Uh, the first way that they do it is they get re- they get uh, recruited in college. Okay, they're in college and they might belong they might belong to some kind of group like a you know um, like a debate group or a think tank. The second way that coons end up getting recruited and you know how they stay untouchable is that they make a conscious decision. Now these are the worst ones. They make a conscious decision to be an agent. They say you know what. I think, you know, the winning team is doing all right. And I, I stand to do better talking shit about black people. So I'm going to go ahead and just do it. I, I, I'm going to make a conscious decision to do it. And uh, another way, you know, it happens is that these guys, they end up uh, like growing up in the suburbs, basically. So they kind of like by by default. They're, they're not really born a coon, but they're raised up as a coon. And since they live in a suburb, they only move and live and exist in places where it's safe to have those points of view. So there'll never ever be somebody like um like a Nipsey Hussle kind of guy who lives in Compton and who will be a conservative but still stay in the exact same area where other black folks can fuck him up if they see him in public knowing they're talking the way they talking the way they talk. I got a friend of mine who I love him I love him from a distance because we used to be like in a um a group like a little dancing group and this dude is a, is a total sellout and he knows that i know that so out of embarrassment or whatever you want to call it he never ever like invites me to come in nowhere near him when he's around you know other people it's just me and him at the mall somewhere like having lunch or something but it's never ever him and his intimate friends because you know they talk to him you know real greasy uh, and, and derogatory, and they know if I hear it, I might say something and embarrass him, and they'll be like, "What you doing, a friend like him, dude?" You know, because he, he's a, like always the token black friend. He's the kind of guy that they'll say, "Come here, you little nigglet," and they'll grab him and try to hold him like fetal style. And they saw me and was like, "Hey, uh, I think the other black dude not really into that kind of stuff." So the, you can see him like, like the body language gets uncomfortable. So that's how these these coons do it, like diamond and silk. Um, and all these other people, they may have some relatives and they kind of sort of might show up at a funeral. But as far as them being like in a situation where they, they encounter black people every day, they might do it, but it's only other black coons they'll make themselves friends with. And a lot of times it's just, it's mainly just for sexual access. At the end of the day, it's mainly just for sexual access. It's not that they really see, you know, they, they seen the light. These guys do that so they can stay around easy access, easy sexual access. Um, and they, they don't want to, you know, like, like mess the, uh, mess their chances of getting some easy, you know, some easy cooch on the conservative side of the game. And they really, for the most part, they're getting paid money. So they don't, they don't really, uh, the amazing Lucas, Anthony, Brian Logan, um, a couple of other coons that, that, that skipped my mind, Brand, I think it's Brandon Tatum, that other coon, he, he fried chicken and all of that. That dude ain't eating fried chicken in front of no black people, brother. He, he'll, he'll get his nose knocked off. You already know how society thinks of, you know, black people and the relationship to watermelon and chicken. And you got a, a black dude who is in front of a crowd of white people licking chicken bones and, and cracking jokes and thinking that shit is funny. And, and he's getting paid good money. But at the end of the day, the way that that guy survives, that his audience is white. So they're not going to, you know, whoop his ass for talking stupid like that. So that's how coons survive. And that's how they get away with it. They stay in a, a, a coon friendly environment. Okay, and they pretend to have all these answers and all these solutions to black issues, but you'll never see them go to the hood and execute, you know, a, a plan or even meet up with black leaders and say, "Look here, uh, guys, I'm, you know, I'm a black person like y'all. Um, 
Have you ever tried doing it this way? You will never ever see a black conservative and I'm a black conservative. I've given out the, uh, the solutions and the agendas, but the videos where I've given out actual true to the bone, die in the wool solutions to black people, the videos get no views. Now, if I talk shit about Mystical or Lil Wayne, that's 49,000 views. If I bash black women, which I never do, if I did, or I talk something about, you know, Prince or something, something, you know, like something, I don't know, something controversial, but, but, but not constructive. That'll get like, you know, 10,000, 11,000 views. Anything to do with structure, empowerment, real, actual empowerment, no views. So I've done it where I've gone to black churches and told churches what they should do with their money and they don't want to hear from me. I'm not, I'm not a church member. So they're not, they're not trying to hear nothing I got to see because everything I'm talking about is not making the church any bigger than it already is. So yeah, you ever wonder why coons get away with it, how they survive, where they keep coming from, they're being recruited. And for the most part, they're actually out there volunteering and grooming themselves to be the next coon. There's never a shortage of coons or agents or collaborators out there. And the sad part about it is some of them dudes can blend in. And they just they, they just function as like um agent provocateurs where they'll just gather intel and say, well, this is what I heard that's going on at this location. But the main coons on YouTube, those guys have made a conscious decision to write a script and leave out all the context in which they speak about certain uh, incidences taking place. They'll leave out the fact that, you know, a cop has a, ha, has a crooked history or the fact that um that you know these guys are uh, preying on low income people and uh, writing tickets for no reason doing all these you know crazy traffic stops they leave out all that information not to offend the conservatives that's paying them and the dangerous and the dangerous part about that is police do police do take those videos and take that information and they, and they, they share it on YouTube and they share it on Facebook and thinking that because a black person is saying it maybe the black dead black dudes fed up with like just like we are. And those guys are playing right into it. There's many coons who've had run-ins with the police and got their wake-up call. Hit like, share, and subscribe. I'm out of here.